Oak Ridge is a city that was built so scientists could harness the heat of atomic energy. Rob Wiles thinks it's ironic then that he could find an artist there who uses heat to create things of beauty. Here's Rob with our final story from Tennessee's Atomic City. Teresa Britton is getting ready to spend some time doing one of her favorite things. Teresa enjoys getting things hot. Ever since she took a class on bead making. I just absolutely loved working with molten glass over a flame, the way the glass moves and the way the colors interact. I just, it was fascinating. All of the glass is colored with different chemicals. Some of the glass has copper in it, some has silver, uh, cadmium, selenium, different metals and minerals and chemicals that are used to color the glass. And a lot of times you can get really interesting effects just by turning the torch hotter or cooler and just interesting things happen all the time. Unexpected things and it's just wonderful. It's great fun. Teresa gave up the pressure of a corporate career for the heat of her torch. I worked in advertising for a number of years and then I took a glass bead making class just on a whim and discovered I liked bead making and did it for a hobby for about a year and a half and then started making beads full time. So she went from corporate mover and shaker to bead molder and shaper, starting with glass rods. I have rods of different colors of glass and I melt the glass over an oxygen propane torch and then I wind the molten glass onto a stainless steel welding rod and then when I have the amount of glass on the welding rod for the size bead I'm going to make, I shape that glass, whether it's going to be round or elongated, and then I do the decoration on the surface of the bead, and all the decoration on the bead is done with thin pieces of other colors of glass or powdered glass. Some of my beads have um, gold leaf on them or silver leaf. But each bead is made individually, one at a time, over the torch. And when I'm completely through making the bead, I take it and I put it into a hot kiln. And all day long as I'm making beads, I feed them into a 960 degree kiln. And the kiln just sort of holds the beads at a temperature while I'm working. And then at the end of the day, when I'm through, I slowly turn down the kiln and that slow cools the beads. And then when they've cooled to room temperature, I take them off the welding rods. And that's what leaves the hole in the middle. Of course, a bead is just a bead until Teresa gets through with it. Some of the things I do, I sketch out. Um, a lot of them are just, you know, ideas that I have in my head and I sit down over the torch and play. A lot of the beads that I make are just happy accidents. I'll start at the torch thinking that, you know, a bead's going to turn out a certain way, but then um, during the process of making the beads, some of the colors in the glass will interact and I'll get a chemical reaction that creates a special effect on the surface of the bead. So a lot of times the beads turn out entirely differently than what I, I started out planning to make. So there's lots of fortuitous accidents that are really, really nice. Some of my best beads have happened that way. So you make the beads and then decide what sort of pieces to put them into once you've finished. Mm -hmm. Well, and I make different sizes of beads, so obviously if I'm making beads for a bracelet or for a pair of earrings, then those beads are smaller um, and usually round. If I'm making beads for a pendant, those beads are larger, a lot of times they're elongated, sometimes they're flattened. So, you know, I sort of have an idea of what the bead's going to be used for. The pieces Teresa create comes from her talent influenced by nature. I do a lot of beads that look more like stones than glass. Um, they look like quartz and um, topaz and some things like that. So I really like the beads that look like stones. And then I have a bead that's a flower garden bead, and a lot of bead makers do flower beads, but they're really bright pastel colors, and mine are a little bit more 
jewel tones and the flowers on them look painted on. They're really neat. I like doing those a lot. I like things that are a little bit more abstract. I do dot beads. I do some calla lily beads, some things that are that are an obvious pattern, but I tend to like things that are more abstract and natural looking. Natural looks from glass, coaxed by the flame and molded by the creative spark of Teresa Britton of Oak Ridge. <laughs>